Hey guys, welcome back. We're working on our Acura TL turbo build. Last video you saw we got the short block assembled and the rotating assemblies finally put together. We set the heads on to kind of get them off the floor, keep them out of harm's way. We used the old head bolts just to hold them in place so nobody could knock them off when they walk by or something like that. I wanted to take a second and kind of go over the head bolts with you guys. Pretty much all of your manufacturers anymore use what's called a torque to yield head bolt. They're good for one use and one use only. Um, anytime you look at a torque spec and it gives you a foot pound or newton meter reading and then a degree reading afterward, that is a torque to yield bolt. When you take it out, the best place to put it when you're done with it is in the trash can. Nine times out of ten, if you try to reuse them, they will break and that will make for a very bad day on you. So we're going to go ahead and discard the ones that we have and start all over with the fresh head bolts that need to go in. So what we're using with this one are Felpro head bolts. You can get them from any aftermarket place, AutoZone, O'Reilly, Advance, any of those guys. These go pretty quick, they're done in two steps. Basically you put them in. What I normally do is when I install them with the torque to yield bolts, traditionally when it's just a bolt that you just torque down, you lubricate the thread. On your torque to yield bolts, you do not lubricate the thread. Um, a lot of times on your torque to yield stuff, the threads actually go into the cooling passages down in the block. This particular engine they do not, but when you're doing the torque to yield, you still want to install them dry. If they go into a water port of any kind, they will come pre they'll have a sealant on them already when you take them out of the box that seals the threads from the cooling package. The way I normally do these, this particular engine, um, when you're tightening these down, it calls for 22 foot-pounds first. But what I typically do, just because it saves time, is I will run them down snug. You'll notice and listen to the gun, you don't hear it rattle like it's impacting the pole. You just hear it come to a stop. There's also a specific pattern for these that I'll get to here in just one second. When you're just snugging them down, it's not as important. But I will go out on a limb here and, and say that it takes a lot of uh, focus and paying attention when you actually start tightening these because you get one shot with these bolts. If you're in the middle of your torque sequence and you forget where you are and some of these bolts require two degree readings after the initial torquing. A lot of times what I'll do is use a sharpie and once I've torqued it to its first initial angle reading I'll take make a little mark on the gasket surface of the cylinder head by that particular bolt. So if I get distracted, I can come back and I know, okay, I did these, let's pick up where I left off here. Uh, this one is set up is 22 foot-pounds on the first pass. Anytime you're working with a surface that needs to be torqued down and torqued down evenly, you start from the center and work your way out to the end. On this particular head, we have eight head bolts. I normally start with one of the top ones toward the center. You just tighten it down. I don't know if you guys can hear the click or not, but this torque wrench will actually stop at that particular prescribed torque. Then you drop across to the bottom and repeat that step again. After you've done this for a while, you'll start to develop a feel of about where you are and you won't be just tugging on the torque wrench anymore. Now we've done the top one here and the bottom one here, so we're gonna to move to the bottom one here. And then to the top one. Now the four center ones are done. The last one of the four center ones we did was up here. So I'm gonna to move to this corner. And then 
to the top front corner. And then we'll catch the bottom front corner. And the top rear. Now, that has the initial torque done. Always go back and repeat that pattern. Because you'll notice they'll tighten just a little more. And that flattens everything back out when you go back over everything. Once you get out towards the ones that were just done, you'll notice they don't tighten down quite that much. The way I typically do this, if I'm doing both sides, I like to get everything set up before I start actually doing the, the torque angle part of it. That way I can just start with one and continue on until they're all done. So bear with me a second while I take these out. All right, we are back. We have all of the heads preliminarily torqued at 22 foot-pounds. I wanted to take a second to go over you. I know I've been talking about the torque angle readings and things like that. Um, you can go to AutoZone, O'Reilly, Advance, uh, probably even Harbor Freight, and buy a traditional torque angle meter. The one that we use here takes a lot of the guesswork out of what's going on. Uh, it's made by a company called Brownline. It's completely digital. Very, very user friendly. Uh, the hardest part about this thing is actually calibrating it. All you do is set it on a flat surface and you push and hold the power button until it powers up. It'll tell you it's calibrating and once it's happy with its calibration, it'll, it'll read set on the display. Now, the last time it was used, the bolts I was torquing were torqued to 70 degrees. This one calls for 90 degrees. It's really simple. You have a minus on this side and a plus on this side. You just push the plus and hold it, and it will take you to your desired reading. And here we are at 90 degrees. The nice thing about this one is it has a digital readout and an audible tone when you get to where you're going torque angle-wise. And it's very simple to use. I always use a pipe that just requires a half-inch drive ratchet. Okay, so you're in a car with the engine, you're just replacing a head gasket or a cylinder head or what have you, and you don't have room for the full swing on the torque angle. That's where this meter comes in really great. Here we are, we're set up and ready to go. We have our tension on our ratchet, so we're going to go ahead and push the select button. We're going to start tightening. Now, right about there, we weren't out of room. We're at about 45 degrees. The nice thing about this thing is you just release your pressure. When you start going backwards, it'll beep at you. You get set up with your tension on it again, you push the select button, and it remembers exactly where you were at. We were at 45 degrees. So now that you've pushed the select button, you continue tightening from there. See the yellow lights come on? And now we're green. That head bolt is torqued down. And this thing works, I uh, have used this one religiously on all kinds of vehicles that you do major repairs in the car and you have to do angle torque on these bolts. I use the traditional analog dial and that thing is great for what it was designed for back in the 90s. But this thing, for the money, you might spend 20 or 30 bucks on the cheap dial and needle kind. This one's about 80 or 90 depending on where you get it. I'm sure by now there are several different versions of it. It's well worth the money even if you're only going to use it one time. The aggravation that it will save you is priceless. So now we have three of our four, of our eight bolts torque for this head. So we're going to continue on in our pattern. Now always put just a little bit of tension on it before you push your button. And then you just give it a little swing. In an area like this, you can get it all done in one time. It makes it really nice. Working on these things in a car, sometimes in a confined space, is aggravating to say the least sometimes. 